Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Uh, my name is Anthony Gatura, and um, I'll present to you today something to do with hackers, black, white, and gray hackers. Okay. I hope you will enjoy the session. I'm looking forward to your questions, comments, and criticisms as well. So I'll begin. So we'll begin with a small exercise. If you have a pencil and paper, um, there's a small challenge for you. Um, draw a line from the laptop to the data center. So I'll give you two minutes to think about it. And then we'll continue after that. I'll give you the solution after two minutes. All right, uh, the two minutes are over. Um, so uh, those are the solutions, possible solutions. <laughs> uh, for the next one, you need a paper and pencil or pen. So you can just give it a try. You just take another two minutes.
Okay, uh, the two minutes are up. So those are the two possible solutions, all right? I'm not sure if any of you got anything close to that. So what is hacking really? Um, from my perspective, I think or I believe hacking is having a better understanding about something. It could be a subject, any subject. Uh, for example, baking, you could know, you, you can know, you know, when you study how to bake and you study it continuously, you know, find new ways, find new recipes, play around with um, the ingredients, that is hacking. It, hacking basically is simply having a deeper understanding about something you know, persistent research, okay? And then from the exercises that I've shown you, it is thinking without the box. You know, sometimes we think too much when it comes to um, some things. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, most of you have phones. Uh, for example, I have an Android phone. Um, I've installed WhatsApp, Live Score. Have you ever asked yourself, how is an app developed? Are there any viruses that can infect an Android phone? How can an Android phone be infected? You, know, you it's all about asking yourself questions and doing lots and lots of research. Uh, now, in the world of cybersecurity, there are three types of hackers. The black hat hackers, gray hat hackers, and white hat hackers. Now, the core difference between all these people are mainly two things permission and motive. For black hat hackers and gray hat hackers, they do not have permission to access network resources. When we are talking about hacking, this is now, we are talking about computers and networks. For black hat hackers and gray hat hackers, they do not have the permission to access, um, you know, company data, private information, financial transactions, you know. And then there's also the motive. Black hat hackers and gray hat hackers have, you know, financial motives. Uh, uh, a good example is ransomware, which I'll show you in a few minutes theirs is to access the network um, encrypt all the data within the network and then they ask for money now gray hat hackers operate in a, what we call a gray area an example is um, currently uh, there's a war between Israel and Palestine. Now, if Palestinians, uh, hackers, access, let's say, for example, Israeli personal data, on the Palestinian side, they are seen as white hat hackers. But on the Israeli side, they are seen as black hat hackers. Now, that's why that is a gray area. Um, okay. Now, gray hat hackers also have different motives. Um, for example, like Palestinian hackers would have, what is it called? Hacktivism. It's, it's like protesting what we had in the, like the Gen Z protest, but instead of protesting in the streets, 
you protest in the cyber realm by you know accessing data and corrupting information of the enemy so if you if you want to access some of these black hat and gray hat hack uh, hackers websites there is a link uh, ransom telemetry ltd where you'll get a list of all the okay not all but most black hat groups and some gray hat groups all right you can only access these websites mostly th using the tor browser you, you cannot use google chrome you cannot use firefox or safari you just you need this tor browser and you'll see why okay so when you open uh, ransom watch telemetry <clears throat> this is this is what you'll see there's a list of companies that have been hacked it is updated on a daily basis today is i think the 19th yes so you can already see today there are four organizations that have been hacked by four different uh, four different black hat groups so the groups are listed on the right hand side <clears throat> so for example if you uh, look at the third group kill security so when you click on it <clears throat> you'll get all the organizations that kill security has hacked all right then you have the link to their website now if you look at that link it has it's not the kind of link you can remember um because this is what is known as a dark web link okay and why for example is q security a black hat hackers you know they have no mercy they don't choose they even hack hospitals like on the 14th of october that was like five days ago rudrak hospitals i think probably it's in india okay were hacked by kill security for money they were asking for something like um it was five million dollars five fifty thousand dollars that's around minimum five million kenya shillings okay this is another black hat uh, group called resider as you can see these are companies that they've hacked if you can just convert that price because that's what they want they are looking for the money so like them they're asking axis health system 25 bitcoin now if you convert 25 bitcoin that's around i think 200 million and something and some change i mean that is the kind of money these people are looking for now they are the ones who actually hacked uh, our kenya bureau of standards um, if you can see that is just a sample of the information they took all right you can see passport numbers id numbers uh receipts docu uh, private documents now this is what is called you know when we talk about data protection now this is exactly what it is um black hat <clears throat> hackers usually blackmail companies uh, in a way that um, they encrypt your data <clears throat> they ask for a ransom to decrypt your data and in order to force you to pay the amount they um reveal part of your data to the world so it's like um they're pressurizing you to make sure that you pay because 
if you actually open these documents, there are a lot of there's a lot of data in the expose, all right? This is another black hat site. You can see the amounts they're asking for. This one I chose because of them. They, they usually show the amounts they're asking from each company. Now, when you come to Grey Hat, this is the Palestinian uh, hacking group. They're called Handala. They operate, okay, it's not a gray area. On their side, they're white. On Israeli side, they're black, so gray area, right? Now, this is a, uh, there was a situation, I think it was last month, where um, there were around 2,000, 2,000, what, what are they called? This um, pages that uh, exploded in Lebanon. Okay, they were bought by Hezbollah. Now, this company, IIB Batteries, was one of the companies that engineered the whole thing. So, after the incident, this hacking team hacked this company and released around six terabytes of personal information including financial records right now if you want to continue reading about these hackers there is the lazarus heist you can live in there's a youtube uh, podcast um the lazarus heist podcast and also there's a uh, sandworm you can read about them very very fascinating stories okay now the main question is how is it done okay hacking is uh, is literally like a manufacturing process you know let's say for example how bread is made in a manufacturing facility you know this flour mixed with you know i'm not sure sugar and stuff then it goes into an oven then it's packaged so hacking is a process which is almost standard almost standard uh it begins with reconnaissance the hackers find out about the organization they find out about the people who work for the organization, the technology they use from domains, URLs, IP addresses. Are they using Windows? What kind of software are they using? When it comes to people, social media sites, uh, do you have, mostly they use LinkedIn. <clears throat> um twitter snapchat whatever okay they try and find out as much information as they can about your company your employees and your technology from there they can be able to create a virus that is custom to you for example if you are uh, an organization that develops software and your developers use Mac operating systems. They will have to go and look for malware that works in a Macintosh. They cannot use Windows malware on a Mac, of course. Now, the third thing is now they look for ways <clears throat> in which they can deliver the malware. So there are only two ways to deliver malware mostly it's either you deliver it through the people who work within the organization or you deliver it through technology that means 
you can use a flash drive leave it in a parking lot somebody takes it uh you can label the flash drive something like um uh what, what, what you can label the flash drive you can write payroll uh september 2024 of course you know employees are curious people somebody finds a flash drive in the bathroom in the parking lot they'll try they'll try and see who is paid what uh when they plug in uh the flash drive game over <laughs> um the malware can also be delivered through email you receive an email telling you you know you have a package a DHL that needs to be collected, please uh, call us or something. So when you click a link, the malware is de uh, delivered on your, lap on your laptop. And then when it runs, it installs more malware and then it creates command and control. Now, command and control is what gives access network command and control is what the hackers use to access your network all right it it's like let's say yeah it helps them access the network so once they access the network they establish a foothold they usually get into one computer so they continue finding out more and more about the network. They move lateral to other computers. They maintain their presence. And this part is a cycle. It's a cycle. It, the, it continues on and on and on until they get to the point where, you know, they are satisfied. For example, if they get to the domain controller that is the you know the heart of the network the domain controller is the heart of the network so once they get there that is where they um, get the files of the organization and then that is also where they spread the malware okay so this is a sample network diagram <clears throat> so on the left we have a uh, web vpn and webmail these are the systems that are internet facing okay these three elements the webmail the vpn and the web create an avenue for hackers to enter into your network all right once they enter your network they can they usually get uh, get into only one computer but then they you know they spread slowly through lateral movement and privilege escalation they do it slowly 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 the end goal for example in this network diagram is to get to the leftmost computer which is swift and with time with time depending on how the network defenses of an organization of an organization is it may take a year it may take an hour it may take 30 minutes but the process is still exactly the same get a foothold of, of the network get command and control, move laterally, escalate privileges until you get to the end. So like this one uh, shows that they were able to get to the Swift computer. So if you really, really are curious about how it is really done, there is this website known as the DFIR report. 
this website, they provide detailed step-by-step -step commands of how an attack is carried out. To be honest, if you are able to read and understand the articles in this website, it will make you really, really good at hacking, okay? Because it describes in detail, even the commands, they even describe the commands that are used. They mention the virus or malware that was used it is something it will blow your mind if you try it just try it and then you see so in order to become a good program no a good hacker the first thing i realized is you to have deep knowledge in programming you just need to know programming okay especially c c plus plus python why these particular languages it's because most operating systems especially windows which is the most widely used is written in i think c plus plus so when you're able to write malware that is that uses c and c plus plus it will be way much easier for you all right then you need to understand how operating systems work windows linux mac and also networking this will help you understand how to evade antivirus uh, there are detections that are used edr and xdr if you understand how an operating system works you will understand how EDR, XDR, and antivirus work. That way, <clears throat> you can be very, you can evade them very easily. If you understand networking, you will evade network uh, firewalls and other network detectors. Now, understanding Active Directory is very important because, well, 95% of organizations in the world use Active Directory because of resource sharing, okay? File sharing, printing, accessing computers. So Active Directory is a core component of the network, all right? Then there's social engineering. Well, social engineering now is where you trick users, you know, to install malware, you trick users to, you know, insert flash drives that have viruses in their computers. But this one is not a must. But it is good to know because it is easier to trick people than it is to beat technology. Then hacking is an art. You need a lot of patience and lots of practice. Practice, 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 all right? Now, certifications. Uh, right now, in the world, OSCP is termed as the industry standard for hacking. However, here in Kenya, we you will see um, cybersecurity positions usually have ceh and security plus now this this now is my personal opinion ceh security plus uh, will introduce you to hacking but they'll not teach you hacking okay they'll just introduce you you will be told things but um, you'll be taught a lot but as long as you're not, you've not typed commands on a keyboard, tried it yourself, failed, repeat, repeat, research, write your own code, and you know, try and hack um, other computers, it will be very, very difficult. 
for you to learn how to hack, all right? So CH and Security Plus is used to mostly, you know, pass the recruitment filters. You know, when, you know, a job is advertised and they're asking for CH and Security Plus, then it is recommended for you to have it. But my opinion is you will not learn much from them, all right? There are some red, red team certifications, and then there are some websites you can use to learn. Is try Hack Me, Hack the Box, CTF Room, which is Kenyan based. And there are many, many more. Okay, these are not the only ones, these are just the most common. Okay, so that's the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, I am open. to hearing them. Okay, uh, thank you, Gatula, for the great presentation. So as I had said, uh, this is just the introduction bit. So now, uh, this is the session whereby now you are free to ask any kind of a question that uh, you might be having. So um, you can just type them on the chat because if we give everybody a chance, it might be a bit noisy. So just type your questions in the chat. But now, uh, as others type, uh, maybe Kimeli Solomon, you can um, unmute and ask your question. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes you are. Okay, I, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Katura, for the, 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 the presentation. Personally, I feel I feel like I am progressing in my career. So I I wanted just to compliment you and to ask for the the website you 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 shared the first time, the first website you shared. It was not it was not clear enough for me. Okay, I'll share it on the chat. Okay, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I can see somebody in the chat has written, do I have to learn Linux? Well, to be a hacker, first of all, you, you, let me say this, it is not a must, okay? However, it is highly recommended, highly, highly recommended because first of all, the it is e way much easier for you to hack using a linux machine as opposed to a windows machine it is way much easier for you to use a linux machine when hacking as opposed to a windows machine not that you cannot use a windows machine you can but most tools are designed to be used with linux okay Uh, Joseph, how do hackers maintain anonymity in the web and the activities? Um, that's a very interesting question. To be honest, it is, it is almost like a degree course, how they maintain their anonymity on the website. Uh, no, on the cyberspace. It's a, it's a whole course of learning how to be anonymous on the network. It takes time, but there are tools that are available to teach you that. If you would want, I can find one for you. I can actually, I have a PDF that shows how to be anonymous on the network. It takes time to learn. It takes quite some time for you to learn and be perfect on being anonymous, but it is possible. It is possible. Um, does cybersecurity require a powerful computer? Uh, not really. Um, you really don't need a powerful computer because one of the operating systems that is used for hacking runs 
can be installed on a phone. So if it can be installed on a phone, I really don't think you need a very powerful computer. When learning, however, yes, when you're learning, you need a powerful computer. But when you're actually doing the hacking, you do not need a powerful computer. Which Linux OS is the best? Uh, this is usually personal preference. Um, there are people who will tell you this Ubuntu is the best. Somebody will tell you Arc Linux is, of, is the best. Somebody will tell you Kali Linux is the best. I, this is that uh, which Linux is the best. It, it's just somebody's own preference. However, there are two operating systems, two Linux operating systems that have been designed specifically for hacking, which is Kali Linux and Parrot OS. I think there are others, but those are the two common, those are the two main ones. Um, where can one access the dark sites you are sharing on the screen? Screen, can one work remotely on this field? Okay, uh, just give me a second. Let me share the link again. Yeah, just, just a second. And be careful when you're accessing these dark websites. Huh? So I've shared the link. Um, What is the best way to prevent your WhatsApp and your social media platform from being hacked? Now, let's start with social media platforms. Uh, most social media platforms offer two-factor authentication, okay? Where when you log in, you put in a password, and then it either asks you for a text or for you to put in a Google authentication code. That is the first step for protecting your social media sites. The second step is when you're selecting your passwords. Try as much as you can not to use the same passwords that you use in other accounts okay for now here this is it this is very tricky because as human beings we have right now we have many 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 accounts so people tend to use you know similar passwords across most accounts so try not using the same password across your accounts uh, for WhatsApp, WhatsApp is a bit different um, because when WhatsApp is hacked, most of the time is mostly, mostly your phone, okay? WhatsApp has no, I'm not sure if it has two-factor authentication, but, you know, lock your phone, make sure uh, you put in not a four-pin character, but six or eight. Uh, to unlock your phone. Um, what else? Update your um, operating system. Make sure you don't click on, you know, fishy links uh, because that is the main way to introduce malware in your phone. Okay. Uh, I hope I've answered that. Okay. Maybe you can share institutions where we can apply for internships. Now, I'm not sure applying for internships in terms of what exactly hacking. Uh, is that institution? Um, Okay, I'm not sure about that. Maybe if I get back to you, Mr. Eric Mwangi. 
and then what are the hacking tools that can help you during hacking oh my god this the, the, there are so many there are so many you see each each stage has its own tool uh, for example when you creating a phishing document okay there's a tool for specifically that task okay when you want to access uh, you want to create command and control there is a tool specifically for that task when you want to find out information about a network when you're inside the network and you want to find out information about active directory there is a specific tool for that so each task has its own tools all right uh somebody is asking sandra is asking what is ethical hacking ethical hacking is uh, now it comes to white hat hackers this is when an organization hires you as a hacker to try and hack them and show them their vulnerabilities so basically they they give you the permission to hack their network so that you can help them identify vulnerabilities and this permission comes in form of a contract okay i hope i've answered that well how do we monetize the skill legally in the cyberspace in the cyberspace in kenya now in kenya at the moment it is a bit difficult to monetize this skill and this is why we have uh how can i put it um the only way to monetize this skill is to get employed right now there are there are some penetrate penetration testing companies but they are not very many they are very few and you know cyber security um is now catching up as in with the data protection laws and uh there is a computer misuse and cyber crimes act critical infrastructure now with those two bills now is when cyber security will be taken seriously so in the next one or two years you will see quite a number of job opportunities for cyber skills all right now <clears throat> when you this uh, hacking as a skill is important for when you go and work in an organization's IT department all right you will help them secure the organization by thinking like a hacker that is what most organization miss okay i hope i've answered that well please share the pdf on uh on the anonymity uh okay i'm not sure how i'm going to share this uh how can one become a security analyst uh for sharing the pdf what you can do uh i think you can share your emails with um peter and then i can share it with you if you can send them to peter then i can share them with you or 
add them to the WhatsApp group and then I can send them to you. So how can one become a security analyst? Uh, now, here in Kenya, here in Kenya, there's a, there's a, there's a college. I can't say, let me not say a college. There's an institution called, I forget the name. They're, they're, they work together with USIU. Now they teach how to become a security analyst. Uh, their program is called Cyber Shuja, all right? Uh, they can teach you how to become a security analyst. That's the Kenyan part. If you want to be a security analyst, um, internationally there's different courses that you have to do so that you combine uh for example like myself i did three courses that actually taught me how to become a good security analyst one of them is uh elastic for security analysis. The second one was threat hunting. The third one was uh, investigation theory, all right? They're not industry, those ones are not industry standard courses, but they are really, really good at helping you become a practical security analyst. Uh, what's the difference between a proxy and a VPN. A proxy is when you go through another computer. You access a resource through another computer. Okay. A VPN, what a VPN does is that it creates a tunnel uh, between you and the VPN provider so that you can be able to access resources through the VPN provider, okay? Is VirtualBox good to use? Uh, definitely, I use VirtualBox all the time. It's free. It's very, I, I, I use VirtualBox and it's nice to use. Does Kenya have state, sponsored hackers if so how can one join these teams i think they do but this is not something they talk about so to be honest i have no idea if i cannot pinpoint and say yes they do they are located at this place these are the people and no but definitely every country at the moment has state-sponsored hackers. If a country does not have state-sponsored hackers, I'm not, okay, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but in Kenya, I'm not sure exactly where they're located, how you, how they get recruited, but I def, I, they're there, they're there. I'm a student struggling to balance between cybersecurity and software development. Is it possible? Okay, I'm not sure how to answer this, but uh, software development will help your programming skills. Okay, they will really, really help your programming skills. However, if you decide to go the software development route, let's say you decide to choose to develop apps, to develop AI bots, to develop um, ARPs, applications. It is okay. Um, you can combine. Right now, in software development, there's something called development security, DevSecOps, development security operations, I think, DevSecOps. 
the whole uh, industry of cybersecurity is because of software problems. The entire industry of cybersecurity is because of software problems. Now, right now, focus is being pushed towards developing proper software. And uh, there's this position that has started called DevSecOps. So if you want to do cybersecurity and you want to be in software development, that is an option for you. However, it is probably difficult to do both because cybersecurity is a mountain on its own and software development is a mountain on its own. So at some point you you need to choose, but go with your heart, choose what your heart you know likes, and sooner or later they'll I don't know you'll find a way, all right? You'll find a way, but it's sometimes very difficult to combine the uh, the two. Okay. Based on my observation from a few hackers I've encountered, I found a debate between Kali Linux and Parrot, which is the best and beginner friendly. Uh, this one is a matter of preference, so I'll tell you Kali Linux. The reason why is because most tools are built for Kali Linux. Most tools are built for Kali Linux. But they're really almost all the same. But Kali Linux, uh, why, um, why I'm saying Kali Linux is because if you look at tutorials that are put up on the internet, a significant number are done using Kali Linux. Okay. How do people hack MPES? Well, if I knew this, I don't know, I would be a rich man. Uh, but most of the time, most of the time, it's social engineering. Tuma kwa hii number. You know those malimu. Uh, uh, you know those text, funny text messages we get. Sina calculator mutiani ko skuflani. Now, uh, there is the other part where sim swapping. Now, sim swapping is very interesting. You know, um, this one I'm not sure, but highly likely it includes, it involves uh, staff of Safaricom, but I'm not sure how it works. If I knew how it works, my God, I would be a rich man. So somebody says it has two-factor authentication. I think that is what's up. There is concern where banks in Kenya have been hacked, equity being amongst the frequently um, frequently attacked. What is behind this? Okay, what's behind this? Well, you know, banks um, will suffer the most. Well, let's say when thieves want money, they'll go to where the money is right and banks are where the money is that is where they point their focus okay now why equity has been hacked many times i don't know but uh, in terms of preference for hackers going for banks yes it's because they have the money okay how can I break into bug bounty hunting? Well, this is a topic for next time uh, because this is a whole new, it's, I, I cannot answer it in five minutes, all right? We will create a presentation specifically for bug bounty hunting. In fact, if you really want to monetize your hacking skills bug bounty is a way to go because 
it does not restrict you to the Kenyan market. It, you have the world as your audience. You have your world as um, your canvas. And you're highly likely going to be paid very well doing bug bounty for bigger companies, okay? So for this question, Mr. Kiki Wawa will create a presentation specifically for bug bounty hunting, okay? So stay tuned, Mr. Uh, okay, I will not say Mr., but now for Professor Kenyo, how can one provide or when accessing dark websites. Now, there's an operating system called uh, Tail, Tail, Tail OS, okay? It usually runs on a flash drive. That is the best way to access dark websites because it is very difficult to infect um, Tails OS, given that it runs on a flash drive. That is, a, that is the best advice I can give you when accessing that websites, okay? What are some of the consequences of unethical hacking? Okay, I'm not sure. Consequences to whom? Uh, to the company or to the person hacking okay so mr kefa moses please clarify your question consequences to whom to the company or the person hacking if it is the person who's hacking uh there is a potential you have a potential of being jailed being fined okay for the organization that is being hacked well uh, they have a lot to lose data reputation if they're extorted if you if they don't have backups they lose they definitely lose money so that is what happened uh is there any advance for ai in the cybersec field Yes, there is a lot, okay? What is happening, first of all, uh, an example, you can now start using OpenAI for penetration testing, okay? It's called, I think, Pentest AI. I can't remember exactly the name, Pentest AI, where, you know, when you're doing a pen test, there are you know the common tests uh common it's called reconnaissance you find out information about a company now instead of doing it manually you just do it through pen test ai all right when it comes to cyber defense uh most security operating operation centers are now using artificial intelligence to detect malicious access all right so ai is being incorporated in cyber security in different areas on anonymous links which technology is used to analyze if a link is safe to use well I, I don't have an answer to this, uh, Professor Kenya. Uh, on anonymous links, which technologies are used to analyze if a link is safe to access? I, I don't have an, uh, an answer for that. Um, is there a difference between information security and information security? What? Lois Musangi. Okay, I'm not sure how to answer that. What's your opinion on Rust language? and the future of programming especially in system programming what i've noticed is 
right now, C and C++ are the primary programming languages in operating systems. However, the founders of Linux are really pushing to have Rust to be incorporated into the operating system. Um, the operating system kernel. It will take some time, but I believe if they are pushing it now, that means in the future, Rust is going to be one of the key programming languages. Uh, is there a difference between information security and cyber security? Not really, it's just semantics. Um, it depends yeah. on how you're using it or where you're using it because cyber security is trying to secure information, all right? And information security, I think, is just still trying to protect security. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can answer one more, and uh, we can close the session at that, so that we don't extend uh, more than that. Okay. Uh, now, Professor Kenyo is asking on fishy links. Is there a tool to analyze if a link is safe to use? Now, this is a bit difficult. Okay, this is there is really no tool that can tell you if a link is safe to use or not because these links are generated you know as many you know like uh, uh, there are billions of links that are generated in a second okay so there's really no tool to check however there are some you know basic eye tests okay uh, one of them is to make sure it at least has HTTPS, all right? Um, you, you look at the domain itself. Let's say you wanted, you get an email, you receive an email that tells you you have a package to collect a DHL. Please click on this link too. You know, you can check, first of all, the source of that email. Is it legitimate? Is the source, first of all, is the source legitimate? And then, if you're not expecting a package, highly likely you're being fished. So for uh, Professor Kenyo, I don't, there's no tool that can actually analyze if a link is safe to access or not. Uh, with imaging, this is the last question. With imaging Web3 blockchain as cybersecurity, and what? Huh? With imaging Web3 blockchain as cybersecurity enthusiasts, what's that supposed to mean to us? So, as cybersecurity enthusiasts, um, uh, Pete my first question to you would be do you own any crypto assets all right if you do own like if you have bitcoin if you have monero you have to start now understanding how to protect your crypto assets because for example one of the groups that i've shown you apt38 they have gone full force 
in stealing cryptocurrency and they are using new technology new web3 technology to steal funds from cryptocurrency exchanges so it is a new field of study it has new opportunities for cyber security people okay uh mr kimeli solomon i've shared i've shared the link let me reshare it again yeah and i think I've, I've i've really tried answering most of the questions i hope i answered them well so peter back to you okay thank you very much uh mr gatula i think we have had a great session uh being the first one uh we are going to address the other questions maybe you can uh, send them on the group uh mr gatula is there he's going to respond to the rest so as I was saying, uh, we have had a successive uh, meeting. And one thing I'd like to say is that uh, this was just the introduction bit, whereby now we wanted to just share what it is all about in a nutshell, answering most of your questions. And I think uh, Mr. Gatu has done a, quite a good job. So now, uh, from now henceforth, we are going to be having another session, like the one we have talked about bounty hunting. So we are going to have another one and uh, that one is going to be more engaging and now after this we shall be having successive uh, sessions and even look to forward to a full boot camp that one will be updating you and we are going to have it in that boot camp whereby we'll start from the scratch we will take you through but for now we'll just be having a session uh, in the weekend and these sessions will be directed by you so if you have any issue in a challenge or there's something specific that maybe you are learning and you're struggling with uh this can be a good backup for you as we look forward to having a full boot camp uh, training you maybe from the beginner up to an expert level and uh, mr gatula here is a courtesy of uh, la Setima training institute as i had said in the introduction that is an institution coming up that will be training cyber security matters so you can uh, still contact him he's going to have a very good uh, advice as he looks forward to also inviting you in the institution in the future so thank you very much uh, once more for availing your time and uh, we'll come to a close in this session so the recording as i had said will be found in our youtube channel the pin edu you'll get the full recording there as well as the materials the materials are going to be shared on the whatsapp so check out there and then you can go and pray around with them so then you can appreciate what is all about uh, cyber security uh, hacking and all that so thank you once more mr gatula as well as the participants and uh, this marks the end of our se first session so have yourself a good and a lovely night enjoy your weekend <laughs>